right, welcome to the tutorial for the slab owl lantern. So, he so here what we're making. These are uh, super uh, super lantern of uh, texture of your choice, and then they have these little openings everywhere that will let the light through when you have an electric or battery operated candle put inside. So I'm going to go ahead and begin this tutorial. We're going to start with four and a half or maybe even five pounds of clay just to be on the safe side. Five pounds of clay. And we're going to prep the slab as we always do when we're working with slab construction. Please do not forget that it is super important for you to let your slab dry a little before you try and smooth it out and definitely before you try and build with it. So I did one side. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side now. Running your rib across your slab like this does two things. Number one, it takes away the canvas texture from the slab roller. And number two, you are also compressing the clay particles so that your clay is stronger. All right, well, that looks pretty good. Um, next is texture. So, you know, I think that this is kind of cute for an owl. I've done lots of different textures on my owl lanterns. So this one is the circles, concentric circles. I have one over here that has a completely different pattern on it. These are, they can be rolling pins or they can be flat texture mats that you roll on. You can, that one's kind of hard to see. Um, but make sure that you decide, here's one that I really like. That's a good one for owls because it kind of looks like feathery, feather feathers. Um, this scales, I think I'm going to use, oh, I just dented my clay. I think I'm going to use the scales. I think, I think, yes. So I'm going to use the scales and I'm going to make sure that they go up and down this direction and not this direction because my template that's going to make my wall is going to go here. So it's really important that my scales come down this way. All right, so here we go. Vamos a poner la textura. And with these rolling pins, um, you got to put pressure evenly on both sides. Keep your hands close. There we go. That looks pretty good. Keep your hands really close to the ends so that the middle doesn't bow. We have a little bit of a seam here, but that's okay. I'm just smoothing out a couple of them. And you can, if you don't like the seam, you can go through here and smooth it. You're not gonna be able to smooth all of it, but you can smooth some of it with a little rib action. All right, so I smoothed some of it so it doesn't have like a super um, strong line going through it. And again, you're not gonna be able to smooth all of it, but that's totally fine. I'm not even worried about that at all. All right, so of course, after you put texture in, you need to release it. Release your clay from the board because it will stick. And I've cut out this template for you. So this template on it, it says, it gives you the size of the template. It get, tells you that you need a four inch and a two inch cookie cutter um, and four pounds of clay, which I'm switching to five pounds of clay. Because what I realized is when I set this down here, it's not gonna give me enough for my base. It might, we'll see. So whenever I cut a straight line, I use a ruler. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this ruler down Oops. Right on the edge and go ahead and cut. There we go. And we're going to cut again. 
And we're using the thickness that is set on the slab roller. Pardon the bell, I'm at school filming this. All right, there we go. Oops. Take the extra pieces, there we go. We're gonna need this clay, so I'm gonna save it. And there is my slab cut out. So I'm going to, I just released it again from the board. And now I'm gonna bevel my edges, so. This is super important so that you can connect it. I'm gonna bevel, so I'm gonna hold it down here and I'm gonna cut diagonal. Esta es una cortada diagonal. So I'm cutting diagonal this way. I'm not cutting a lot off. It stops at my thumb, okay? And then this stays the same angle measurement and the same direction for the other side. So it's not like a 45 degree angle, it's not a 60 degree angle. It can be any angle you want as long as you keep both sides angled the same way. All right. This just gave me a bevel here and it gave me a bevel here. So I can now score my ends. Score deeply, use a serrated rib, and I'm going to use move some of these things out of my way. And I'm going to go ahead and use a paintbrush and a little bit of water. To put onto my scored edges so that it sticks. This is um, acting as slip. Slip is just watery clay, so when I put the water and brush it onto the scored ends, I now have slip. All right, I'm gonna stand this up. And I'm going to begin tacking. So you want the ends to line up And I'm going to support it and I'm going to roll it across. I'm going to lift this up so you can see what I'm doing. That's not working very good. I'm rolling, 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 rolling. It has to overlap and I'm kind of putting pressure on the inside and the outside as I roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it. Then I'm gonna flip it over. And I'm gonna tack this side. So you see what's happening here? Rolling it. It will leave a little bit of a seam here, but that's okay. So I'm gonna smooth the top, and I'm also gonna smooth the inside. I'm gonna support here, and come in with my rib, and go in the direction of the overlap. And I'm not going to be able to get all the way in so I can flip it. And again, you want to go in the direction of the overlap, supporting the outside. All right. So I'm now connected. I've got this tube, and these are my scales. I think I want my scales to go this to go this way, so that way. This is the way that I'm going to build my my turn. Okay, so now it's time for the base, and I'm hoping. Yep. Oops, I'm out of camera. I'm hoping that this will be enough for my base, and I want to use the same texture 
that matches the walls. So I'm going to flip this guy over. I'm going to flip this guy over because now I'm going to score the bottom. So I've decided this is the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and score that. Add some slip or some water to make slip. Make sure you hit the entire edge. There we go. And now I'm going to kind of, I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to give it a little kiss. Make sure it's round. And notice I'm putting it, let me move this a little for you guys so you can see better. Notice I'm putting it on the edge of the clay. I just gave it a little kiss on the edge of the clay so I have the rest for my features. The reason I gave it a little kiss, I just topped it on there, is so that I can get a watermark and now I know where I, I need to score for the base. So there's my base scored, add a little water. I kind of tap, tap, tap it because I don't want to get rid of my lines there. Tap, tap, tap. I'm going to add just a little tiny bit more to the actual cylinder form and put it back on. Make sure it's a nice circle and I give it just a little, move this over just a little bit, let's see. There we go. Give it a little wiggle, 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 so it starts to stick and now I can cut. Before you cut, make sure your base is nice and round Take a look all the way around and make sure your base, I'm coming in here with my finger and just making sure that my corners are rounded. Now I can cut. Um, there's also a cookie cutter. This is the four inch cookie cutter, and this fits the base. So if you wanted to just cut with a four inch, you could. This is a little bit more precise. As long as you cut carefully, then uh, you can do it this way as well. There we go. This, boom. I'm gonna come around here now and with my rib, I'm going to rib the base and connect it to my form. I usually do this as it's sitting on the board or standing on the board, but I just wanted to show you guys how to do that. Going all the way around, making sure it is attached. My fingers too, there we go. So I'm gonna give you a look here. See, that's nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. So the inside now has to get attached also, so I'm gonna use my water and my paintbrush to go around and around and around the inside and connect. You wanna make sure that it's sealed really well. All right, double checking my wall connection here. Now that this is connected, I'm gonna round my rim. Take my fingers and round it out. And I'm going to start giving my owl a little bit of volume. So watch how I do that. I take my hand and get it wet. And I'm going to come inside and I'm going to start scooping up the sides like this. 